Hi guys, Olive here, here today to talk to you about what books I'm planning on reading in August 2020. Getting straight into it, my classic pick for the month is going to be The Picnic at Hanging Rock by Joan Lindsay. This is an Australian modern classic set in 1900. Three schoolgirls and one teacher go missing during a Valentine's Day picnic, and the rest of the book happens in the aftermath, and it looks at the mystery of what happened to them. It was adapted into a movie in the 70s, and then most recently it was made into an Amazon miniseries that I watched last summer and absolutely loved. I might even rewatch that series after I finish this book. My five-star nonfiction prediction book for the month of August will be In Gratitude by Jenny Diskey. This is a book that author Jenny Diskey wrote when she knew she was dying from cancer. In this book, she looks back at her life, including a lot of the troubles that she faced and her mother-daughter-esque relationship with writer Doris Lessing, who took her in as a teenager. I am sure this is going to be a difficult one to read, but I've heard amazing things about it. And then just recently, I did a whole video in which I discussed books I would like to reread. One of those was The Odyssey by Homer. I have not read this book since high school, and I would really like to reread it at the beginning of this month, give myself a refresher, because there are two other books I would like to read this month that are directly related to it. First, I would like to be the last person on Earth, probably, to read Circe by Madeline Miller. This book tells the story of Enchantress Circe within Greek mythology. She also has a pretty big role in the Odyssey, hence why I have linked these two books up. But in this book, we get her story from her perspective. Nearly every single person I have heard speak about this book has just raved about it, and I would like to finally read it. And the other book I would like to pick up after my Odyssey refresher is The Penelope Ad by Margaret Atwood. This is a similar kind of thing to Circe, where a female character gets to give her side of the story. But in this book, it's Penelope, wife of Odysseus. In this book, we get to hear how Penelope held everything down, raised her son over the 20 years that her husband was away on his Odyssey. I think reading these three books this month will give me a very unique Odyssey experience. Continuing on with my unofficial one romance book per month project, I'm going to be reading The Boyfriend Project by Farrah Rochon. This book is about three women who all get catfished by the same guy. They bond over this experience and they make a pact with one another that they will not start dating again until they've spent some time improving themselves. However, this proves to be a problem when one of them meets someone special. Getting into romance has been one of my favorite things about my reading year so far in 2020, and I'm really excited to keep it going. A couple of months ago, I made a recommendations video for nonfiction books that discussed thieves or thieving in some kind of a way, particularly ones that dealt with the natural world. And people in my comment section were kind enough to remind me that there was another one of those out there, in fact, one that I had on my TBR and my physical shelf that fit the bill. I just hadn't read it yet. That book is The Dragon Behind the Glass by Emily Voigt. This book is all about the coveted arowana fish. It is a status symbol in Asia, so there are some very wild stories surrounding it in captivity, but also in the wild. I can't believe I forgot about this one, but we're going to remedy that this month. Since it is still the summer, I am still very much in the mood to read some good fantasy books. I just a couple of weeks ago reviewed a high fantasy slash epic fantasy series, so now I'm going to pivot and pick up a work of urban fantasy. I'm going to pick up the third book in the Adventures of Owl series called Owl and the Electric Samurai by Christy Cherish. The main character of this series is a young woman named Alex. But she goes by her codename Owl. She was previously a graduate student in archaeology, but after she was unceremoniously booted out of her program, she turned into an international antiquities thief. She's kind of an Indiana Jones type figure, but one with a very sassy cat and one who is terrible, just terrible at interpersonal relationships. This series starts with Owl in the Japanese Circus, in case you're interested. I am really excited to move forward with the series. I have heard in the reviews I've read that this is the most significant one in the series thus far. I cannot wait to find out what that means. And speaking of owls, I would also like to read a new release called Owls of the Eastern Ice by Jonathan C. Slot. This is a nature nonfiction book all about the author's search in eastern Russia for the world's largest species of owl. Steve sent me this arc with a note tucked inside of it that read something along the lines of birds and Russia, 
why it is the perfect olive book, and it really is. Plus, it seems like it's going to be somewhat similar in tone to The Snow Leopard by Peter Matheson, which I really enjoyed earlier this year. The rest of the books on this August TBR are all digital arcs from NetGalley. There are so many books coming out in August that I am so excited about. I'm thinking if I have time, I might try to do another week of reviews like I did back in April. First, there's Migrations by Charlotte McConaughey. This book follows a woman who makes her way to remote Greenland with one mission in mind, to find the world's last remaining flock of Arctic terns and follow them during their final migration south. Given my fondness for birds and nature writing in both fiction and nonfiction, you can probably guess what attracted me to this one. Another upcoming release I am really excited about is a memoir called The Smallest Lights in the Universe by Sarah Seeger. The author of this book is an astrophysicist at MIT, and in this book she discusses her own search for meaning through searching the universe for any Earth-like exoplanets while she was dealing with the grief of losing her first husband to cancer. This one sounds so beautiful and yet so sad. I will be shocked if I don't end up falling in love with this one. And then finally, what is probably my most anticipated nonfiction release of the entire year of 2020 is due to be released at the end of August. It is Vesper Flights by Helen MacDonald. It is a new nature essay collection from the author of H is for Hawk, my favorite nonfiction book of all time. To say I'm excited about this would be a serious understatement. I have been waiting to pick this book up until we got closer to the release date, but we're there. So I'm going to be digging into this very shortly. There are some more August new releases that I'm considering reading and reviewing. I just haven't fully committed to them yet, so I will hold off on talking about them. But beyond those possibilities, all the books that I talked about in this video will be my priorities for the month of August. As always, if you've read any of these books, if you've heard of any of them, or if you're now interested in reading them after hearing me talk about them, I would love to hear from you in the comment section below. But if you would prefer to reach out to me somewhere other than YouTube, I am on a variety of different places on social media, and the links to all of my profiles will be in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!